guys, this is Chelsea Beebe, and tonight we are out here at Mount Falcon Park. We're gonna be doing some flammulated owl surveys. The flammulated owl is a very small nocturnal owl that lives in predominantly Ponderosa and Douglas mixed conifer forests. It is a pretty generalist owl in terms of its diet. It likes to eat primarily insects and other arthropods. The reason that we're out here surveying for it tonight is the flammulated owl is a fairly understudied owl. There's not a lot known about its general range and where it's found. It's pretty difficult to study because it's so small and it's primarily nocturnal. Um, so what we're going to be doing tonight is playing some callback surveys. That's where we play a recording of a male owl singing and if there's any males in the area then they will call back basically in a defense of their territory. So we're gonna try to learn a little bit more about their presence in our parks. Also help to better understand the quality of our forest in this park. Um, if flammulated owls are present, it's a pretty good indication that we have healthy forests with a pretty diverse structure in terms of age classes of trees, snags, places where other wildlife like to nest and roost. So hopefully we'll have some good luck. So a couple years ago, we did survey this side of Mount Falcon. It's a pretty rich environment where there's not a lot of trails or no trails at all. And they did detect some flammulated owls. Um, so we know that they're present in the park. We just don't know if they're gonna be present on this side of the park. You can notice over here, it's a little bit sparser in terms of the trees and maybe just less high quality habitat. So it's important to know if they're over here as well, just because the two sides of the park are managed pretty differently and can really lead to different species being present. Our first point's just down here a little bit. So this is our first point. So we are at our first point. We're gonna get set up and get ready to go. The general way that this survey works is we have a 10 minute survey window where we'll alternate between calling for the owl and listening for the owl. So we'll wait for two minutes at the beginning basically to let anything get used to us, acclimated to our presence. And then we'll call using this boom box here. Has a recorded flammulated owl on it. We'll call for 30 seconds using that and then we'll listen for a minute and a half, and then we'll repeat the process until we reach 10 minutes. During that time, we wanna be really quiet and just listen very closely for any calling that we might hear. It can be pretty loud at first, or it can be quite distant. So really being quiet is critical during the owl survey. Once we finish, we'll record any data that we collect, either the presence of a call or no call detected. Additionally, we'll report any species we might be hearing in the area, and then we'll move on to the next point. When we're walking between points, we try to stay really quiet because sometimes the owls will call as we're walking between points. So it's just a nice time to be pretty silent, listen to the night and see what might be out there. We also will take recordings of the weather. So we don't wanna call if it's too windy or if it's raining. Both of these can affect the likelihood of the owl to call. So even if they're here, they might not decide to call that night because of discomfort and inclement weather. And if it's really windy, we might not be able to hear them if they're calling. So we wanna sort of survey during optimal conditions. Tonight, I think we're gonna be okay. It's a little bit overcast, but the rain's come and gone. It's pretty quiet right now with wind. So um, I think we should be pretty lucky if they're here. <laughs> So we've done about five points already tonight. It's been pretty quiet. I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the safety precautions that we make for both the human observers and for the flammulated owls. So when we come out here um, as scientists, we make sure that we have properly functioning headlamps. For our surveys here at JCOS, we typically will stick to our trail system. That makes it a little bit safer for walking and for navigation. We also use an iPad with a map 
and designated points to make sure that we're going to each appropriate survey point. Anytime you do surveys on a wildlife species, there's potential to have some kind of an impact on them. We wanna ensure that we have as little impact as possible. When you conduct playback surveys, like what we're doing tonight, it can have an impact on the birds just because you're adding a stressor to their environment that wouldn't actually be there. So we're acting as a potentially aggressive male coming into their territory. So if an animal was here, they'd have to kind of step up and defend themselves. So in order to remedy that, we make sure that we only survey until we hear the owls calling. We don't try to kind of over survey to add any added stress. We also consider it to be a valuable trade-off just so that we can appropriately manage their habitat through either some of our forestry work or maybe rest restoration work so that they have better habitat in the long run for the species. One more thing that we do do to ensure that the owls stay safe is they can actually be predated upon by larger great horned owls. So if during our survey we hear a great horned owl calling, then we'll cease doing the survey because we don't want to draw in that predator and risk an owl getting eaten by the larger bird. So those are just some of the things that we do to make sure that we stay safe and that the birds stay safe and relatively unaffected by our work. It's almost midnight and we finished up our survey. We did not hear any flammulated owls tonight. There's various reasons that we might not have heard them tonight. Um, one is that we just didn't detect them and they were here. That is a very often a possibility with wildlife surveys that the animal is present but you just can't find it. So maybe they were in the area but they decided not to call. Um, other reasons may be we are a little bit towards the end of their survey season. So it's June 23rd now and there's a, a strong possibility that they could be busy with eggs or chicks at this point. So they don't have as much interest in trying to defend their territory. All of their time is taken up with their uh, young. Another reason, maybe they just weren't here. That's also a possibility that they're not really present nesting in this area. They might utilize other areas of the park that were just not in the area that we surveyed tonight. So it's important for us to stay on top of our surveys and some of our wildlife baseline inventories so that we know where these wildlife species exist in the parks and we can manage for them um, in the best possible way. With the flammulated owls, they're um, very tied to forestry. So when we're doing forest treatments for either fire prevention or forest health, um, we want to consider these species during that time. So as a visitor, the best way that you can help to protect these species is by adhering to the park hours. It's best to not be in the park after dark so that the birds have sort of free reign and are not impacted by visitors in the area. It's important that we continue to survey wildlife in our parks so that we can manage our land in a way that is beneficial for wildlife and ensure that we protect these species and provide habitat enhancements where we can.